fall of South Vietnam. In 1954, after gaining independence from France, Vietnam was divided into two. Communist Ho Chi Minh ruled the North, while a non-communist government led by Ngo Dinh Yim led the South. The division was supposed to be temporary, but elections to reunite the two Vietnams were never held. As time passed, the communists began to take matters into their own hands. Communist forces set out to take over South Vietnam and unite the North and South under communist rule. After 20 years of fighting, 150,000 North Vietnamese troops stormed through the southern capital, Saigon, and renamed it to Ho Chi Minh City. The communist North had officially conquered the South. During this time, many Vietnamese citizens took the drastic decision to leave the country. Some fled on planes or helicopters with help from the U.S., while others left on makeshift fishing boats, uncertain if they would ever reach land or be accepted by other countries. The United States will take all. Yes. You really believe that? I hope. An estimated total of 1.5 million people fled the country. I was a photographer, I was a musician, a composer, I was a host of the uh, Vietnamese children TV show, and I worked as the editor for Vietnam Science Press. I aim at the education of the children, so the parents love it, the children love it. The, uh, how to describe the program? Well, it's some time, somewhere between the Mr. Roger and Sesame Street. Educational, but entertaining. In addition to hosting four television shows in Vietnam, Le Vong Khoa was also a television producer and director, a composer and conductor on Vietnamese radio, and the author of a series of books on youth education, health, and religion. He also taught photography at some universities and founded the Artistic Photography Association of Vietnam. With this impressive resume, he was very well known amongst the Vietnamese people. He never imagined he would have to lose all this during the Vietnam War. I left Vietnam in Hush. I'm not prepared for that, but I know that if I stay back in Vietnam, the communists will kill me. His music, art, and photographs violated the Northern Communists' strict censorship laws. As a non-communist, he knew that his creative forms of self-expression could get him arrested, fined, or most likely killed. The one the people love, but not a member of the communist that was the worst victim of the communist. I was loved by the Vietnamese people, old and young. The communists hate that. At that time when I left Vietnam, I do not know where I will land. But with the help of the American and the American people, I was able to land on America. And when I come in the USA in 1975, late in 1975, I had about $5 in my pocket. That's all. And I was tempted to get the first can of Coke. It cost me about 25 cents. And then I was surprised that it, it was just a can of Coke, but it cost me quite a bit of my fortune of that day, $5.
After arriving in the U.S., Le Van Kwa began working on farms in Southern California for a living. In just a few weeks, he had gone from a famous figure in entertainment to a war refugee working on a farm. A few years later, with help from friends in the U.S., he was able to start rebuilding his career. American newspapers began to recognize him first as a photographer, then as a musician and composer. Slowly but steadily, Le Van Kwa regained some of the fame and success that he had left behind in Vietnam. He wrote a musical composition titled Symphony Vietnam 1975, which gained him more attention and recognition in America, particularly amongst other Vietnamese refugees and citizens. Decades later, he would be performing and sharing his music in various states and countries, including Russia, Ukraine, and Australia. Le Van Kwa has even been recognized for his cultural contributions to the U.S. by Congress, the U.S. Senate, and other organizations. As impressive as it sounds, it is nothing compared to what he had in Vietnam. This sacrifice is only one example out of 1.5 million refugees. Some lost their successful plantations and businesses, and some even lost their friends or family. But all of this is a small price to pay for freedom.